brain tumors are any tumors inside the skull. They could arise from the bone, the coverings of the brain called the meninges or the brain itself. Now, they could be either cancerous or non-cancerous. Roughly about 50 to 60 percent of all brain tumors are cancerous and the others are benign or non-cancerous. The most common type of brain tumor is the glioma, which is a malignant tumor. However, it can be of various grades of malignancy, grade 1 to 4. Uh, the lower grade ones are treatable with surgery and often have very good outcomes, but the high grade ones are strongly cancerous and while we can make the quality of life better, we can extend their lives, ultimately they do come back again. There are a large number of non-cancerous tumors in the brain, meningiomas, acoustic schwannomas, pituitary adenomas. These tumors can be operated well and they can be totally taken out and if they are totally taken out, the patient is cured for life. There is no specific causation of a brain tumor. The majority of them are spontaneous. They can occur at any age and different types of tumors can occur at different ages. But by and large, the common brain tumors occur in the, in the 40s or 50s of life and uh, there is no specific age uh, sex predilection. So the commonest symptom of brain tumor is headaches. Now headaches is something which is very common. All of us have headaches at some time or the other. So a headache which occurs early on waking up in the morning, which is progressively increasing in intensity over a period of time, is becoming more and more severe and frequent and is associated with vomiting, visual disturbances or weakness of an arm or leg. These type of headaches would be more likely associated to be caused by a brain tumor. The second symptom one has to be careful about is epilepsy. Now again, epilepsy is a large, is a common disorder, occurs in many people. One in a hundred people have epilepsy. Most cases of epilepsy is not, are not related to a brain tumor. Only some epilepsy patients where the epilepsy is multifocal, where it's not getting easily controlled, where it starts in later onset of age, and if the epilepsy is changing patterns, in these cases we should suspect a brain tumor and we should take uh, further measures to investigate them. The classical indication treatment of brain tumors is surgery. Most of these cases need surgical removal. Now, what has happened over with the years is that newer techniques have come across with which we can make the surgery more safe and more effective. Uh, the operating microscope is something we have been using for a number of years. We have uh, modes of taking the tumor out safely like the ultrasonic aspirator. But what has changed is better techniques of localizing where the tumor is intraoperatively. And for that we use what is called a navigation. Just like you have a GPS in a car, at any moment you know exactly where you are uh, in, in space. So similarly, the MRI that we do is fed into a computer in the operation theater and using that we know at any moment where the tip of our instrument is in relationship to the tumor. So this helps us to go straight to the tumor to go enter it using the shortest trajectory, the most safe trajectory. We know which areas are important which could cause damage. So using this we can avoid damage to those areas. In addition, we can use intraoperative neuromonitoring. So there are certain brain areas which are important functionally, which could control the arms or legs or the speech. And using these neuromonitoring techniques, we can try to save those areas so that the patient does not have a deficit. 
the other technique which is used is to assess that we've taken out the tumor completely and well and we have what is called immunofluorescence where we inject a dye the patient actually uh, ingests a dye before the surgery and this goes and sticks to the tumor so when we are operating we can use a fluorescent microscope and the tumor will brighten up and light up like a lamp so when we've taken the tumor out we check with the immunofluorescence whether there is any brightness or not and that helps us in taking out the tumor completely at medanta we also have the intraoperative mri so that during the surgery we have an mri in the operation theater which the patient gets a scan done and if there is any tumor left while the patient's head is still open we can do and take the, the complete tumor out we've also got techniques like neuroendoscopy with the computer assisted stereotactic biopsies where we can take out a small tum piece of the tumor a biopsy of the tumor from a deep seated location without causing a damage and on these techniques help to make the surgery much more safe for the patient and we can get a good outcome without any deficits in the patient in addition we have what is called the radio surgery for certain small tumors if there are small and not causing any problems we have a machine called the cyber knife with which we can treat these tumors with highly focused beams of radiation which can penetrate the intact skull so we can actually treat these patients without opening the skull in a non invasive manner and it's a totally painless procedure the patient is treated and goes home the same day and can resume work the next day yes it unfortunately it does the first and foremost thing is the psychological trauma the patient has the patient is totally distraught when they come and they know they've had a brain tumor diagnosis but we have to reassure them we have to calm them down we have to tell them how it is now no longer dangerous to take out brain tumors we have lot of advancements with which we can take up the tumor safely and preserve function the second factor which affects the quality of life is where the tumor is located there are two areas of the brain which are very very important in terms of functioning of the hand or the leg or speech or vision so if the tumor is in, is in these areas there is a risk of affecting the quality of life of the patient and as i mentioned earlier we have various tools and methods which we can now use to preserve the function general precautions avoid sort of exposure to a person who's infected but uh, in general the principle is get back to life as soon as possible and if there is a deficit we have advanced rehabilitation techniques we have in fact robotic re neuro rehabilitation machines with which even patients with severe deficits we can now help using these advanced techniques so if it's a malignant tumor there is always the potential to recur especially the high grade malignant tumors we have to keep monitoring them with repeated mris with repeated clinical assessments and uh if there is a recurrence there are still modalities immunotherapy intra tumoral chemotherapy reoperations which we can do for these patients for the benign tumors if we've taken them out completely then the chances that it will recur are not very high there is still a small percentage chance of recurrence but a good surgical excision if done for a benign tumor is generally curative